Hello and welcome back to S&C TV. In this episode, we're going to take a look at one of the things that can happen in the shooting field, either by accident or because of a kind of handler error. Um, and what's important to note at the very start of this episode is we're going to talk to you about um, ensuring that your dog doesn't swap, doesn't swap birds, doesn't pick up a bird, see another and pick it up or swap or try to carry two. Um, it's really important that our dogs don't learn to do this for all kinds of reasons. Um, uh, the most important thing of all is really to make sure this just doesn't happen by not putting your dog in that scenario to start with. However, there will be times when you send your dog for a bird and unbeknown to you, there is another shot bird very close to it that the dog will see. So we do need to do this preparatory work. But my advice to you is what the first two or three outings that your dog goes out into the shooting field, that you deliberately, consciously make sure that when you send your dog for a retrieve, that you're making sure that you're not sending them then into what is a very difficult situation. So what we're gonna do now is Lindsay and I are gonna show you a few techniques that you can use back in the training field to prepare us, layer up and get ready to, for a nice day picking up when your dog is not gonna swap game. Let's show you an example of what should happen. Back. So we've just seen Dougie make a retrieve with two partridges that were really quite close together. Um, ideally, like we said earlier, with a young dog, we wouldn't send a dog into that situation, but at advanced level, they need to be able to cope with that. So now what we're gonna do is show you three layered up exercises uh, that we can do at home in the training field to start to prep our dog to be able to do what you saw Dougie doing previously. So what I'm gonna do is hand over to Lindsay now and she's gonna show you what we call the 180 split, 180 degrees of split retrieve. So Lindsay is gonna leave the dog in the sit stay. She's gonna walk out and just pitch the dummy. We're using a fence line. This could be a fence or a hedge line. So we've got one dummy out. The dog is now encouraged to about turn to refocus and Lindsay now is going to walk out once again and put a second dummy out so we've got two dummies out this is really important when you've got two dummies out it really changes the dynamic of what's happening your dog can very easily run and try to swap birds he could try and um, get around you and get both birds in his mouth so by putting the dummies as far apart as we can do 180 degrees putting yourself in a fence in the way of the dog, we can manage that. So now Lindsay is about to turn the dog. She's got Buzz focused. She set him up, gives him the fetch, get out command. He goes out, makes the retrieve. She takes the delivery. Now what's really important and really important at this stage is that she doesn't send him for that second dummy. Otherwise, what we're doing, not otherwise, what we're doing is we're managing the dog's expectation at this level, at baby level or intermediate level, we want the dog to expect not to be going out to retrieve that second dummy. If we keep taking the first dummy from him, spinning him around, sending him back out straight away, it can create delivery to hand problems uh, as, as well as a multitude of other things. So it's really important, the 180, it gives us control of what happens in an, and what we're gonna do in a second is we're gonna look at a couple of other techniques to bring those dummies closer together. In technique one, we looked at how we could use a fence line and by separating the dummies 180 degrees apart, it effectively put you between each dummy, which made it easier for us to guarantee that the dog was successful in only picking one dummy. What we're doing now, and this is kind of the next level up, it's what we would label as the split retrieve. As it, how, as it happens, we've got two orange markers, which by the way are kind of handy. It makes sure you're accurate. It makes you think about as a handler, how you're setting up the exercises, but actually they're irrelevant, but they're sort of helpful. So what Lindsay's gonna do now is again, we're putting two dummies down, but basically all we're doing is bringing the angle in. So before it was 180 degrees. Now the angle is, I don't know, I guess it's about 120, something like that. Somebody will correct me. And um, what we're doing, you see Lindsay's throwing a dummy out 
here to the first marker. Out goes the second marker. She's making a lot more um, enthusiasm with the throw. She's making the brrrr noise. She's um, making a hand clap to simulate the shot of a gun. And now what you'll, what you'll see her do, which is really important, see how she's turned the dog, she's setting the dog up, the hand's coming down as a directional guide. She waits until the dog locks on, looks at the dummy you want, stating the obvious if the dog wasn't looking at the dummy you want. So if you're pointing here and he's looking over there, when you say fetch, guess what? Guess which way he's going? He's gone to the wrong dummy. So you need to factor that in. Once Lindsay's sent him for the first retrieve, just like on the 180 split, we're making sure that we walk out and pick the second dummy by hand. Again, making sure we're training the dog to think or to understand that just because he's made one retrieve, he's not necessarily going to have the second retrieve. In the shooting field, we may well send him for the second dummy or the second bird, but at this stage, in early training, we're just knocking that out of his mindset. So having successfully established, and it's important that word established, your dog is reliably going out on a split retrieve. He's not attempting to look or change or make any deviation on his way out or in to the second dummy. What we're gonna do now is bring the dummies really close together. Um, if you see the width of those two posts, what are they? Three and a half foot apart, a meter apart. Um, uh, in a second, you're gonna watch Lindsay bring out, as it happens, she's brought two rabbit dummies this time, uh, dummies with rabbit fur on them. That helps to enhance the enjoyment that the dog has. It's also getting us closer uh, to a bird or a rabbit in the shooting field. So in a second, you're gonna see Lindsay leave the dog on a sit stay, walk out. She's gonna place the dummies this time. And the distance between those is quite important. Although they're quite close together, they are separate. Uh, and we want them just far enough apart so that they're tempting, because now we're actually tempting the dog. Um, uh, but we don't want to tempt him so much that he's guaranteed to fail. Lindsay's going to walk out, place the two dummies accurately. She's then going to cast the dog. She's not going to tell him which one to pick because in this scenario, in my opinion, I don't think it would be uh, acceptable to expect the dog to differentiate between the two as long as he only picks one. What you'll also see her, to do, see her do, because remember we're practicing and we're training, is she's gonna follow the dog out. I'm a great believer in you following your dog out to a retrieve if you think gonna, something's gonna go wrong. And it then means that as soon as he picks the dummy, you'll see Lindsay light up. She'll start recalling him like a crazy lady. Beep, 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 really working on her whistle. She'll run backwards and do everything to say to Buzz, hey, don't get involved with the other dummy. Come straight back to me. Let's see how it goes. So there's the sit stay, make it very clear so the dog doesn't follow her. She puts one dummy down, two dummies down, and Buzz is watched both, he's marked both, and now he's waiting for Lindsay. It'll be interesting to see what he does. Cast the dog, he goes, I'm not sure about that, picks that, then she works really hard. And if you see, if you watch Buzz's body language, because he's an advanced dog and he's, he's actually trained beyond this level, he didn't show any interest in the other dummy at all. Remembering the rule of thumb at this stage, remember this is early stage training, Lindsay's gonna leave him on the sit stay, do what she's just done, walk out, pick up the dummy, go back and reward. It's important you reward the dog for doing nothing. So she's gone back and just put the dummy in his mouth. You've seen her do that. That's her equivalent of saying, well done, good boy, you can have the dummy instead. You don't need to go and get it, I'll go and get it for you, but you still get to get the dummy in your mouth. Remember that thing, guys, the dog's out here because he wants a dummy in his mouth. If you allow him to have it, you're giving him a reward. So in this episode, we've looked at a few things you can do to, uh, or what to do in the event that your dog decides to swap or change birds in the shooting field. I'm gonna change what I said there because actually this whole episode has been about teaching your dog not to do that in the first place. Remember the golden rule of gun dog training is to not allow your dog to fail. So you've seen us do a 180 split You've seen us do a 120 degree split. And then finally we had two birds really close together. Lindsay followed the dog out. She helped it to understand, hey, don't pick the other dummy. And all of the little techniques that we put into that. Let's assume you've made a mistake and you've done something silly. And this would be silly. If a gun has shot four or five birds behind them on the peg, don't send your dog out there. Don't send a young dog out there. He might be really good on dummies, but you could blow his head. And before you know it, he's running around picking up birds and dropping them and changing 
uh, birds and, and, and just trying to pick up two or three That's at once. That's a lot to undo. That's a lot to undo. Yeah. So we want that not to happen, guys. But let's pretend it has happened. Do you know what the golden rule is now, guys? Walk out quietly, save your embarrassment, go out to the dog, bring him to you, put his lead on, stop what you're doing, put him back in the truck, go home and think about what you're going to do, which is to go home and rehearse some of those exercises we've done and then not make that mistake again. So in due course, we will be able to perhaps send him out to uh, a behind a gun where there are numerous birds down. He'll go straight there, pick it, not look at the others uh, and come straight back to you. If you do that with a young dog, it is highly, highly, highly likely that you will mess him up and you'll cause a problem which, like Lindsay said, will be really difficult to undo. So let's avoid problems. Let's not set our dog up to fail. Yep, that's it for this episode of S&C TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe.